Hey everybody, Patty Tolly Parish here with InkyObsessions.com. Um, trying to knock out another quick video um, off my list of requests that I got on my uh, Facebook page, which is also Inky Obsessions on Facebook. Um, and that is a comparison of the various different spray inks that I have. So that's what we're going to do. How's that sound? Um, good, I hope, because that's what we're doing. Eh, made the executive decision. So, as per usual, not really uh, prepared. So let me grab a little bit of something, something here. We'll start with some cardstock. And we'll start with some of the ones that aren't um, as popular. Now, when I say that, I mean everybody knows about the Ranger Adirondack sprays. Everybody knows about Dilutions. Um... Everybody knows about Lindy's Stamp Gang and the various kind of sprays that they have there. But a lot of people don't know that there's other sprays out there. You get Tattered Angels, Gl Angels Glimmer Mist, Maya Mist, Radiant Rains. And this used to, when I was doing a lot of journal pages, um, a la Robin Marie Smith method, um, she got me started with these from her when she had her website. And her shop um, and I don't know if she carries these anymore but you can get these just about anywhere and they are the SEI they're called tumble dye spray inks and these are really cool because they are color fast now the colors are more um, how can I say basic colors there's no metallics there's no mica they're all flat kind of opaque colors um, I'm trying to think if there's any other no all the colors are pretty much like that and the colors are pretty basic um this is only three i only about a couple of each ones that i had um just to kind of show you different colors and what they do but here is here's the beauty of these plug in my little faithful heat dryer or heat gun jesus i don't know what i'm saying um and we'll do a little spray test. Watch, these will all be clogged. Mark me words. Haven't used them for a while. Um, this was what I first started with was the spray inks. I loved them. Oh, crap. Are you kidding? Really? This is the way we're going to roll tonight? Ay, ay, ay. Oh, there we go. Little... There we go. Because it's usually very vi vibrant. Um, and I used to like to mix these two because I got a really hot coral color between that and the yellow. And of course, blue will mix with yellow and, oh, hell, make a pretty green. And this will mix here and make a pretty purple, right? And the blue by itself, turquoise by itself. Oh, hell, look at that. Sprayed that yellow in there and mixed, got green in it. Ah! But anyway... Here's kind of a nice little sampling. Oh, Jesus, that's on my keyboard. Hang on. Oh, my God. I knew I'd do it one day. And that day, my friends, is today. Sweet Mary, hold on. Ugh, who else does this happen to? Anybody? Nobody I have ever seen. And I watch a lot of YouTubes, let me tell you. Hopefully, you can't see what I'm doing. You can't see it. My damn shirt that I'm wiping this off with. Okay, now I got yellow all over my keyboard because they are permanent. Hello. What the hell's happening here? Calculating size of my desktop. Christ, I must have pushed something. Hold on. Sweet Mose. Show up on my camera. I'm not even five minutes in and we got our first disaster. So we are on par. Um... Anywho, back to the inks. You can let these, you know, run into any kind of rainbow of colors. I mean, I'm not doing anything here fancy. I just want you to see the end result. So I'm going to dry these a little bit. I'm going to suck up a little bit because we'll be here all flipping night. Nobody needs that. So we'll dry this a little bit. Can't believe of all colors yellow on my keyboard and my my um what's that called my uh, touchpad. At least it could have been turquoise. 
Oh well. This is the story of my life. Almost dry. I'm going to soak up a little bit. Oh, pretty napkin. Throw a little bit more on there. This is speed up the process. But I do want it dry. Because... You know what, I think I'm going to switch and use some uh, multimedia or, or watercolor paper because this is just cardstock. It's not going to hold up. That's not what cardstock was made for. I knew that before I even started. Did it occur to me? Not till right now. So, let me get something else. What are we going to do here? Let me take one of my uh, journals. Where is that? There we go. Oh, this is an old junky one. That back when I when I first started doing all this mixed media stuff, I was spray ink crazy. And um, I know that's a shocker that I might go crazy over something, but this is just a book of just where I was cleaning off stencils and that kind of stuff. So it's. It's like a book of nothing. So I'm going to go in here and add more nothings to this book because the paper is going to work better for me. Oh, look. Pretty napkin in my book. So we'll just start here when we start. But for this one, I'm going to, I'm going to still use this, right? Almost dry. Not quite. Let me dry a little bit more. Because I want you to see... Good enough. That if we go back in here and spray water on these, it doesn't reactivate the ink. I've got clean water dripping off on my hand. And probably on my keyboard for that matter. But the colors stayed what they were. They didn't um, let me let me try to protect my keyboard here with something. There we go. Um, they didn't run at all. They are color fast and they stayed in place. So even though these might not be the biggest variety of colors on these inks, if you use them like in layers with gesso and so forth, this is a great one to use with that because I can go in now with gesso. I'll show you. Hang on. I haven't had my fingers in gesso for a while. That seems like a good idea. And this is with Robin Marie's method that I took her online classes when I first started as well. Um, this is one thing that, that she uh, was kind of, I don't know if I want to say famous for, but to me she was. Um, and going in and, you know, making a layer, usually with stencils and shapes and stuff, and then going back with some gesso and just kind of getting rid of some of the stuff in the background. Right? Well, not this much, but just showing you. My gesso is still white because they are color fast. They didn't. They're permanent once they're dry. They'll blend, as you saw, when they're wet, because I used three colors and I got that whole rainbow. And um, so that's what they're good for. And that's the SEI Tumble Dyes. Okay. So that's that one. Next, moving right along. Oh, hell, I left my water upstairs. Started a new diet today. Need to drink my weight in water pretty much. I'll tell you guys about that. It's a new product that I found out about that I've started trying myself and plan to sell, but I wanted to use it myself and be able to tell my experience and how it worked for me uh, before I try to, uh, you know, really go hog wild selling it to people. I'd rather have my experience myself and be able to share that. So, um, but it's called Plexus, by the way, if anybody's interested. P-L-E-X-U-S. Uh, my website for that is PlexusSlim.com slash Patty Parish. You can go read about it if you want to, but I'll talk about it sometime in the future. So these, um, I got these somewhere at a reduced price, and I don't think I've ever used this, actually, but the color I liked. And this is a Maya Mist. It's pink ginger. It's got some mica in it that settles on the bottom. That's why I'm shaking it. It's got a glass bead in there. Um, 
These are water-based, provide great coverage with a few sprays, can be used on chipper. Okay, let's see what happens. Because these three I'm just going to play with. I got a radi Radiant Rain, a Tattered Angel's Glimmer Mist, and the Maya Mist. And I have no idea what these things are going to, if they're permanent, if they're not. No idea. But that's how I roll. Mix up this one. This one's called Patina. It's blending with that one and making a nice little lavender in there. These are really heavily mica. They're kind of cool looking. And then you can see the mica settled in them. See, you see that gold layer in the bottom? Shake that one up a little bit. This is Radiant Rain. And these are made by the same by Luminart who are the same people that make the Twinkling H2Os and the um, Silks acrylic glazes. The uh, Silks are the ones that I do those texture panels with. And Twinks are just a little hard pans of um, watercolors that are edible. I'm telling you, they are freaking awesome. Ooh, they got a really tight lid on there. Um, this one is called, what the hell, Ginger Peach. Ooh, that's pretty. So, um, they look like they sucked in there and dried pretty quickly. They're not completely dry. But see if you can see the shimmer on these babies. Get that to focus, hopefully. Or am I just making you seasick again? That teal's pretty, the patina. And then that's that, what was it called? Pink ginger. A lot of silver um, in this one. So let me dry these. A little bit of the mica is coming up on that one. I don't know if it's because it's just damp or um, that that's its tendency, but I'll try to keep my mitts out of them until I get it dry and spray some water on there and see what happens. We'll throw some gesso on there too. I haven't been all gooked up with gesso in too long. Oh. Gotta put an end to that. Oh, you might have seen on Facebook, I got a call. Actually, not a call, but I talked to a guy yesterday. We went to friends' houses to watch the Ravens game. Any Steelers fans out there, thank you very much. Um, we did not win, but that's okay. It was a good game. Um, and uh, one of the guys there I'd done a painting for before um, for his dining room kitchen area a big canvas and he said how busy are you could you maybe make me another canvas I want to get another one I thought yeah ah, bring it to mama I will paint you something so maybe I can maybe I, what I can do is when I'm doing that people have asked me to video how I do a canvas so maybe what I'll do is try to videotape bits of that as a, that's a good idea good idea Kill two birds with one stone. Make a little moolah at it in the, in the meantime. This seems like it's... It is kind of still damp, but it's pretty much dry. So, it looks like I just have orange on my hands. Try this hand. Uh, less now that it's drier. And only orange, so... Looks like the ginger, like the Maya mist and the glimmer mist are staying, um, the glitter staying down on the paper more. Not the glitter, but the mica. This one's coming up a little bit more. And it might just be the way it puddled here that it was a little bit more uh, damp. So let's try this, see what happens. Wet them up again. Put some water on here. Good Lord. Let's put some water on here. Come on, there we go. Let's go this way so I can see what it's doing. Okay, it looks like the orange one, which is the um, Radiant Rain, is the only one that's running a little bit with the water. Now let's throw a little bit of gesso down here. Oops. See what we get with that. Don't need as much last time. I went a little crazy. Because if it's going to run with the gesso, it doesn't take much gesso to get them to run. 
So here's this one. Let's see what that's doing. Yeah, that's turning a little bit yellow. Get that off my fingers, on my, on my little art shirt. Isn't that a beaut? Well, actually, I might need a little bit more than that. What the hell do I know, anyway? Honestly. That's staying pretty white. I'm going to use a clean finger on here. This one's staying pretty white. So let me take my white fingers and go over here in this spot. And this one is turning a little bit yellow. So some of that mica is coming up off of there and changing the color of the gesso. So there you can see close up. Uh, hopefully you guys can see that. Focus for me, baby. The gesso is not quite as white as it is on the blue next to it. And there it is on the Maya Mist. So there's that little demo. Moving right along, and this I don't want to dry or fold over. I'm ripping it out. We'll put it over there on the stack. So next, let's go to some really cool fun stuff, but I want a clean page. Oh, good lord, I don't know what happened there. Oh, like some sort of camouflage mishap. Okay, let's try this. Lindy Stamp Gangs. So, these are lovely, lovely, lovely. Um, I brought probably too many colors out here, but um, I did have a, I did have a thought in mind. I only brought one moon shadow, one of those, two of those. Okay, so one of the um, type sprays that Lindy's has are called Starburst. And you can see the mica settled in the bottom. You have to shake these. And the label is very um, close to what this color is going to look like. Um, so you want to shake them up. The cool thing about Lindy's... Oh, let me see if I have a, one... Oh, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. Um, what I was going to say, show you is how they come new. They come empty and dry with the pigment in the bottom. And then there's a fill line over here, this little white fill line. Fill them up with warm water and let them set for 10 minutes. Shake them, and you're good to go forever. Um, but you don't pay for the weight of all, this, all these containers filled with water. So they're, I think, really, re uh, really uh, reasonably priced. And there is a lot of micas in here. And the, this one's called Magnolia Magenta Gold. Um, so let's see what we get here. I'm not going to spray as much, maybe, so they don't take as long to dry. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? Probably not going to do that. So let's put a row up here. I want to get you to see how much mica's in here, but I'm going to get my damn keyboard screwed up. Can you see that? Running this way. Maybe, no. Oop. Oh, hell. Look at that. But it's in my protective plastic envelope. So we're all still good. No harm, no foul yet. So, what is this one? Tainted Teal Love. This is one of my favorite rights because I love me some teal. Yep. There's some teal. And then I want to, and they're mixing. You can see a purple starting to form where they're mixing in the middle. Let me try to do this and then show you once I pull back. Can you tell that it's getting a little bit of violet in there or purple? All right, that's pretty cool. So this one, I'm showing you this brown one for a reason because I also want to show you the difference between, or is that a good one to show you? I don't know. Anyway, what the hell. So this one's called Mission Bells Brown. It's got some gold mica in there and maybe other colors. I don't, it doesn't have the whole description uh, on the bottle of what all colors are in it, but it does on the website. And uh, it's got some really cool colors in it. This, so coming out of the, out of the jar, this looks like a dark bronze, uh, gold brown, almost a little green hue to it. That's pretty. 
I don't know if you guys can see that all the mica that's in there. These are really beautiful. Um, but now what I want to do while these soak in and dry is I want to show you one of the moon shadow mists. So this is another type of their spray and it looks very similar to the starburst when you just look at the bottles. But you'll see on the bottom it says moon shadow mist. All the moon shadow mists have a base of a brown to them and I don't know if it's um, what is the brown is it oh what is it that's in a lot of is it tea like a tea stain I forget what that brown is it'll tell you on the website I should know that but anyway this one's called bucket of blood red they had like a pirate bunch of um, colors in there and this one how it looks on the label again is kind of how it looks when it's going to spray and it, it never looks the same depending on the little hills and dips and divots that you have but I wanted to show you how this has the brown in it but some red compared to the other brown you can see the red in there right and that's a moon shadow mist oh you can really see up close Oh, I'm going to screw my computer up showing you guys that. See the red running down there in that drip pretty heavily? It's one of the micas in here is a red. So, um, I'm going to dry that a little bit because I want to keep some of that color on there. Even when this moves around just a little bit while it's drying, it, um, you can see it just likes like that mica is just boiling in there. Really cool. Got some dripping down. Oh, you can really see the red where it's dried here on the bronze. I'll show you that close up in a minute. I'm hoping these close ups are, you can see what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I might think I'm crazier than you already think I am. I get that a lot. Don't really care. Part of my charm. <laughs> and I'm just, I'm doing this so this dries. I'm trying to wipe out the puddles. So kind of ignore my fingerprints in there, but I'm just trying to speed up the drying process. I miss Paula Phillips. Every time I turn on my heat gun, I think of her saying, heat gun, when she's drawing one of her journal pages. I hope she gets back to doing her videos soon. I learned a lot from her. You can still see her videos, by the way. It's Journal Artista, Paula Phillips. Check her out on YouTube. She's got a blog too. Okay, so you can really see uh, the difference in these here. So this magnolia magenta gold. Let's see if you can see the gold mica that that hits that in certain lights and that pink, right? And then the teal, tainted teal love. I forget the colors of mica that are in there, but you can see a teal mica in there on top of it. It's just an enhancing the blue, the blueness, the tealness of the teal. All right, see the difference? So then, here's the bronze. Um, see where the red dipped down into it from the bucket of blood and dried there with the red pigment showing? But see how that looks like more of a bronze, metally, metallic kind of a color? And this is the bucket of blood. I hope you guys can see that. But see the brown kind of base to that and then the red mica and some gold mica in there. Maybe. Hopefully. That's what a moon shadow mist is. It's with this brown base in it. And there's all kind of all kind of colors of this. They've got them with teals and greens and purples and all kind of colors mixed in with these different browns. So now, that's pretty dry. Let's see what we get if we wet them. I'm going to wet them down here and just let them drip off. Got to prime my bottle, my sprayer. Okay. So, looks like I'm getting a little bit of colored water off of all of those. If you can see my little drips here on the floor, on the, uh, yeah, on the floor, on my desk. And let me do it this way. It's real faint, but it's it's some some there. 
So I think these are, for the most part, they're pretty color fast. And I think I'm losing maybe a little bit of the mica when I did that. And let's test it with the gesso because that's a good test for the, see if they're permanent or not as well. I don't know if you'd want to cover any of these pretty metallics up with any gesso, but I'm going to do it because I can. So here's this on the pink, stay in white. On the teal, stay in white. On the bronze, stay in white. On the bucket of blood, it's kind of staying white, but there's a little bit of that red um, that's coming up. So um, let me do it over here where it's really dry and see what I get over here. See if the mica does the same thing over here. It might just be because it's the slightest bit damp. I'm not sure how that how it's made to um, adhere, but it, it it's not coming off like the other one did. Um, the orange one earlier. No, no, that's actually pretty. That's pretty good. Um, so those all seem to be kind of permanent. A little leaking with the uh, you know dripping of the mica excess mica coming off of them. But for the most part, they hold their own. Hmm, more than I can say for my paper. All right, so there's those. And another thing that um, Lindy's has, and I think they still have these, they're called Glitz Sprays. And these are, um, I think they're just... They come out way more sheer, and I don't know what makes them do that. I guess it's just the amount and the colors of mica that are chosen. But see how light that label is? Ooh, hello. Where are we? See how light the pink is on there? It comes out with just a faint, faint, faint sheen. Oh, you know what? This has one of the old lids on it. And I told you guys this in my last video that Lindy's, when they first came out, their bottles did what this one just did. It just, it won't spray. Or it'll spray two times and clog. And they sent everybody and their brother free replacement nozzles that work like a dream. And now let me figure out where the hell I put them. I thought I had a couple extra ones just laying. And I'm back. Here's a pack of uh, five that they, uh, I don't know if they sell these, but they sent me these, a bunch of these for all my older sprays. Um, and I know they sell them, but if you have some sprays that are old like that, their customer service is awesome. But you can see, I'm getting nothing. I'll even spray my computer, nothing. Whew, taking a risk there, because just my luck. <laughs> oh God. Throwing that one away, because that is a dud. Getting out a new one. Dislike of magic. Put this on. A little mica settled there. Shake it and there we go. Spray in perfectly. So you can see what a light baby pink that is. You can, you know, it's really, really sheer. And that is what you'll see in the glitz spritzes. Really sheer, baby, pastel -y shades of mica. And another product they came out with, I don't know, kind of a while now, I guess, are called Flat Fabios. And the Flat Fabios, Fabio, whatever, um, they have no mica in them. So that's why I call flat. They're not like metallic, they're flat. So here's what they, ooh, look at that. That's pretty. That's called Hibiscus Rose. And this is a flat Fabio called Luscious Lime. And by Jiggities, it's luscious. See the difference in the intensity of those versus the pink I first put on there? And see that there's no there's no mica in these greens, the green or the or the bright pink. So let's see if they're color fast or not. I'm not gonna have to take some of this up. And when you do this, it really lightens it because I'm picking up a lot of the um, a lot of the ink off of there. So I get a much lighter tone. If I leave it on there and take the time to dry it, 
you know, you get a much more brilliant, more like this color on the label. Um, but I don't want to take that time. So I'm not. Oh, my best friend Gail and I, this past weekend, went on a trip up to the Laurel Highlands uh, of Pennsylvania where uh, her grandparents lived and she had some friends up there and we met up with one of her old friends that she used to play with when she was a kid that she's reunited with some, I don't know, Facebook. I don't know how they got it back up again. But we found out she's a little bit psycho this weekend. Had park company on the second day. Actually, we're not even 24 hours in. I thought, oh, good lord. Yeah. So, you know, what are you going to do? So see how that um, glitz spritz over here? I don't know if you can even see that. It's barely a sheen of the metallic. It's very, very subtle, which is great for certain applications where you'd want it to be that way. And here are the ones, the flat Fabios, with no mica. Hence the name flat. So let's do this. Let's put a little prime my pump again. There we go. Some water here, some water here, a little bit over here. Let's see what's moving. Okay, getting a little color off the Fabios. I don't know if you can see that down here or not. Um, this is so subtle I can't even tell. Yeah, a little bit of color is moving on this as well. And I think it's, again, just the mica moving around. So, let me get those dried off again. These certainly, none of these look pretty because I'm just doing like these swatches on them. Should have probably sprayed them through a stencil or something, but eh. What are you going to do? If I'd have planned ahead, perhaps I'd have thought about that. Actually, I did. That's why I have my little Tim Holtz stencils here ready to go. Forgot about them. Eh, crap. What are you going to do? paper. This is mixed media paper. It still seems like it's really curling and buckling when it gets wet more than I remember it. So let's try a little little gesso. A little bit here. A little bit here. A little bit here. Let's see what we get. Green. Well, it's pretty much staying white. Pink. That's pretty color fast as well. Actually, find a clean finger. That's just completely covering that. So that's really. So I'm I'm tempted to say that for this spritz, it was just the, some of the mica rolling off. Now the more I actually the more I work this in, this is getting a little bit pink around the edges. Um, I don't know that I'd work it that much if I really wanted to just so part of it, but. It's still pretty white because it's, you know, there's not, again, much color there. But there you go. Those are those Lindy's. Put that in my heap. Let us move. Let me try to clear this up a little bit. Get myself some elbow room. Oh, Lord. Okay, that gives me a little bit more room. And let's go to Dilusions. <laughs> Come here, lover. That's not a Dilusions, that is Miss... Oh, yes, it is. It's the white linen. What the hell do I know? Okay, so these are some of the most fabulously bright, clean, um, vivid pigments uh, for these translucent sprays. Love them. One of my favorite colors. Oh, that one's still, that's still full. I got an open one, I'm sure. Um, vibrant turquoise. So let's just do a couple of these. Hello. Maybe that's almost empty. 
That is almost empty. That's almost empty. <laughs> okay. That's Calypso teal. That's the new teal. What the hell? Oh, here we go. Vibrant turquoise. <laughs> Can't leave home without it. It's one of my faves. This and the bubblegum pink together. Yum. That's what I'll do. See how dense that pigment is on this? So this and bubblegum pink. Let's do that. There's no mica in these. These are just translucent, strong pigment. Uh -oh. Might have a little blockage. Oh, there. <laughs> nope. She's working. <laughs> Look at that pink. Mama. Now, of course, I oversprayed into the teal which is going to make me want to put down teal so it looks like a true teal. Now let's run into that pink. Is there enough to run? A little bit. Those are vibrant, really hot, bright colors. I love them. Let's throw some... Will this one spray lemon zest? I'm telling you, gotta consolidate some of these damn bottles. Lemon zest. See, this is even dry, it's still blending. Turning that into a green. Some orange over here. And that, they'll just, they'll layer up and they'll blend beautifully. You can make just about any color of the rainbow if you, if you understand how to blend colors. Which is pretty easy. And you can't really screw up too badly. Oh, crap, here we go. Oh, it's Mumsy. Hold on. Bye. <laughs> and I'm back. I was trying to, talking to Mumsy and drawing the page to try to save some time. I should have uh, tried to be more mindful of the oversprays where you get the dots of all the different colors. I don't like how that looks. But for what I'm trying to show and the point to get across, you'll understand that that doesn't really matter in just a moment. So there you go. They're pretty bright and, and pretty damn luscious, if you ask me. So let's do this. Let's spray with some water. And you can see the colors running, right? They are not, um, where am I in the frame there? There we go. They are not, um, permanent. They will run. And they will blend and mix and, and keep doing that. So if you do uh, use the dilutions, which I'm sure you will if you haven't already because they are scrumptious, um, be mindful that they will move again when they have wet media on top of them. They're not permanent once they're dry. So let me try to dry this off again. And I'll show you what happens when you use gesso on inks that are not permanent. But before you stay, pretty much all of those that we've used pre previously, the gesso stayed white because they were, it's wet media on top of the dried ink and it didn't move anywhere. It's still a little damp, but not bad. Oh, look, another little the heck is that? Oh, a baby wipe I saved. Ah. Never can tell what I'll have hidden in a book. Okay, good enough. Good enough. Where's my gesso? So let me show you what I mean. I'll put a little in the turquoise, a little in the pink. Oops, a little in the orange. And you'll see what I mean. What happens here. The gesso on here is now light blue. Didn't stay white. Got blue on my finger. The pink. Is turning pink. As I knew it would. Right. And I got pink on my finger. And the orange. Guess what the orange is going to do? Anybody? Oh, yes, Sally, you're right. You are so smart. You listen to the teacher. 
she is going to turn orange and a little pink and a little whatever's in there. Right? There you go. So, um, you can see where, depending on what you're going to do with these things, can you see that that's actually light blue and light pink and kind of yellowy orange instead of uh, the bright white like they were over here? See the difference? Maybe there. Uh, yeah, so these are lovely, but be mindful that they aren't, oh, that they are not permanent. Isn't this a very professional demo? Don't you like it? Mm-hmm. So, next, I want a clean page, please. We're going to put my dilutions away. And I'm going to grab the Ranger Adirondack colors. And let's use a different little palette here. Let's use some sunshine some orange. These are also translucent uh, and pretty vibrant, but they're more earth tones. They're not that bright, hot pink, hot turquoise, hot yellow, blaze orange of, of Diane's. They are uh, earthier. They're just more muted. And the orange looks really bright, probably. And it is. Here's another one of my favorite colors, lettuce. This is a real pretty green. Oops. That one's a little clogged. That's a little messy. And what do we got? Purple Twilight. That's a pretty one. But you can see where the... Hello. I can hear it hissing at me. She's going to blow. Come on, baby. Okay, don't do it. That's all right. Don't embarrass me on camera. Sailboat Blue. How about you? There we go. So you can see these are, are very um, vivid. They're not quite as neon -y. You got more of a leaf green here. Um, this is kind of bright, the ocean blue, but it's a completely different blue than the Diane's. Right? So let's see what these do. I kind of already know, but I'm going to try to like give you the element of surprise so you keep watching. Ah. Oh, yeah, you got to get up pretty early in the morning to get over on me, people, so don't even try it. If you believe that, you really haven't been paying attention to to my last 30 some videos. <laughs> hey. No mica in these either. These are like a flat Fabio. Right? Just um, colored ink. No, nothing flaky in there. Let's see. Do we have these? There's a little bit coming off of that. Good enough. All right. So they're fairly dry. So let's go back with some water. And you see they're running. And they're they are running, right? They're doing the same thing. So um what do you want to bet adding gesso does the same thing? And we get orange, green, and blue gesso. But let me prove it. Don't believe me. Let me do it. Oh, Lord, I'm flicking crap everywhere. Okay, here we go with the orange. You can see that's pretty yellow. The yellow on my finger. And the green. little bit green. It's not not showing as bad, but I know for a fact that it does come up in the gesso because I've seen me do it. So you can see the blue coming up. I'll leave some swirls in there so you can see that a little bit better. This poor shirt. Good lord. Um, but you can see where that's starting to lift and the gessos are becoming uh, unwhite shall we say. So they are the Ranger inks. Um, let's see. I got one more brand that I want to show you guys. 
and these are by Stamp Zia. And the, she has, I think, three different, well, last time I bought them, and that's probably been a year and a half ago or so, um, when I was in my spray ink craze. She has, what the hell does she call these? Chroma sprays. And then she has ones called Chroma Jewels. And then she has one called Color Wash Jewels. And I forget what the difference is. All right, so let's try to figure it out. So this one's a blue topaz. Let's try to find a similar color. Sapphire. Oh, here's an ultra color wash. Color wash and ultra. What the hell? Very confusing. That's probably why I bought them all. God forbid I should miss something. Do I have another blue that's the chroma? Here's a chroma that's called slate. And then there's a real pretty one. Coal. I love that color. Chroma and sky. So we got chroma, chroma jewels, ultra color wash, and color wash. All in a bluish tone. No flipping idea what's going to happen here, but we're going to go for it and see. So here's some blue. This is the chroma spray in sky. Is that coming in? All right, this is a Chroma Jewel in Slate. Much darker. This is an Ultra Color Wash Jewel in Sapphire. And this one is just a Color Wash Jewel in Blue Topaz. Ooh, that's pretty. I like that one. I like them all, but I like that one the best because it looks closer to turquoise. Okay, so what's happening here that I see that's different? I have a uh, new idea, actually. Let's dry them. This one's almost dry, actually. Got a little puddle here. Dry that up. So you'd have to go on her, it's Stamp Zia, Z-I-A. You'd have to go to her website and read up on these. Because I don't feel like doing it right now. And I remember, honestly, being confused by the descriptions. And I think that's why I remember buying them all. <laughs> um, okay. So, um... Hmm, I don't know. So here you go. This is uh, starting here. That's the chroma. Next, that darker one is chroma jewel. This one is ultra color wash. And this one is color wash jewels. So they look like just different colors of ink to me, but apparently they are different formulas. Beats the living hell out of me. Why? But... I don't know. So let's see if we can figure it out. So here goes some water on this one. Some blue running off of there. A little bit off of there. And there. And there. Hmm. So they're not color fast. None of those are color fast. Um going to have a royal mess by the time I get done this little ordeal. Got little spritz marks over everything. All right, let me dry a little bit of that. And I think we can all figure out what the gesso is going to do. You know what? Dry enough. I really like this color, though. I wonder why I hadn't used that one more. <laughs> hey. That's actually staying much whiter than I thought it would. So, hmm. Let's get down here in the darker part. and see what happens with this one. That's staying pretty white as well. I got a little bit of blue off of my finger. I don't know if you can tell that or not. Just a little bit of tint. Oh, yeah. That one's coming up a little bit more. Yeah, that one's coming up a little bit more. Let me go back to this one. That is getting a little bit 
a blue in there now that it's satin is it's coming up through. It looks like a, a little bit grayish blue in there. And that one is too, which you can do pretty turquoise. That one I think is coming up. Yeah, it is coming up a little bit. I didn't know if it because it was lighter or what, but it is. It is coming up a little bit. So you can see I don't have stark white on any of those. Hopefully, if you can't see it, you're just gonna have to trust me. All of those stamp zias uh, are not color fast, but they are lovely colors. Um, Get in there, get in there. These little boxes worked out great to store my inks. They were wine cases, uh, a wine bottle case that we had at work with our company logo on it, and they were falling apart. The logos were falling off, and they were going to be trashed, and I grabbed some, and my inks fit perfectly in there. So... Gosh, that feels short. Oh, it is 53 minutes. What the hell do I know? I have no concept of time passing, apparently. <laughs> so, I'm going to clean up a little bit. Try not to electrocute myself by spraying water on my plugged-in heat gun. Um, and then I'm going to try to figure out what's going to be my next video. I think I'm actually home this weekend. So, I'm feeling a stream coming on. So for those of you who like to participate in the streams, um, pay attention to my, if you're on Facebook, check out my uh, Facebook page, which is Inky Obsessions um, on Facebook. And my own personal page on Facebook is Patty Tolly Parish. And um, if you want to go to Ustream, uh, go there and search for Inky Obsessions and join the crowd or follow the crowd. I forget what it, the button says. And when you do that on Ustream on my channel, you will get an alert or an email um, every time I go live. So, um, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I don't know when. I'll give you as much notice as I can. But as we all know, I fly by the seat of my pants. So you never know what's going to happen between now and then for me. Um, but we are still in October, so be a friend, be a good relative, and get all your female buds and family in for their mammograms. You never know. You know what it did for me. Saved my life. So, be a good buddy. Get your own, too. Um, okay, so I'm going to sign off with that, and hopefully we'll see some of you guys on Ustream. And don't worry if you can't do Ustream or you don't know how to or you don't want to. The time's not convenient for wherever you live. Um, I do record them. And then once they're recorded, I upload them to YouTube. So I try to make it available to everyone. Um, but for those who can join me live, I'll see you someday soon. Have a good night. Bye.